Okay, so let's go to you, Mark. Um, a little bit on tax and reporting, which is uh, also very important in this, this uh, data uh, and blockchain space. Um, so uh, what are the prospects of the passage of the substantive rule and the reporting rules when, uh, and when we should expect those rules to be effective? Well, the most important thing to know is that in the past month, the Internal Revenue Service, in response to a demand from Congress, has proposed reporting rules for cryptocurrency and other digital assets that are uh, incredibly comprehensive, that they um, will move us from a situation where we've had no reporting whatsoever to essentially putting um, each of the uh, digital exchanges um, into a position where beginning in 2025, they're going to have to report price data, basis data, and all the information regarding their customers. The rules that came out were almost to be honest, laughable in terms of how comprehensive they were and in such a short period of time in which uh, the exchanges have to uh, comply. And there's pieces of the legislation which require data from 2023 to be kept and then used for reporting in 2025 and years thereafter. The Internal Revenue Service itself, I think it's fair to say when they came out with these rules, understood the magnitude and the watershed of change that they represented. And it looked like we were going to have a situation that replicated ones in prior years where the Internal Revenue Service came out with these very hard deadlines and then the goalposts kept getting moved further and further back. When it looked like that was about to happen, Congress actually for the first time has stepped in and they said not only do we not want these rules postponed, we think that 2025 may be too late that we enacted, we enacted the mandate for the rules for 2023, and we really didn't give the Internal Revenue Service the right to postpone the rules. And what it's going to do is it's going to either force a significant number of exchanges to stop taking U.S. customers, or stop taking U.S. customers that are acting from within the United States and can be traced back right. here, or they're going to result in these mini exchanges that get formed in the United States because the larger exchanges won't have the ability to comply within the period of time that's uh, being uh, proposed by these by the by the rules just to put it out there it's over 300 pages single spaced yeah and it, and it seems like uh, the exchanges are leaving the US not only for tax reasons but uh, also regulatory but um Good to know that it's also a threat in this regard. Um, so uh, still with you, Mark, tell, tell us a little bit about um, if you can share an overview of how the IRS believes that cryptocurrencies should be taxed. Oh, okay. Um, there have been a significant amount of uncertainty as to the taxation of crypto transactions, and crypto transactions can offer significant tax benefits. Probably two of the biggest issues we have, um, the first one is what we refer to as wash sales. In other words, trying to accelerate losses to be able to use against capital gains. And there's a series of rules inside the United States tax code um, that say that if you sell a uh, security Security, and then within an, a 90 day period, be beginning 45 days before and ending 45 days after the sale, you reestablish the position that the loss is, becomes unavailable and the, the amount of the loss simply gets added to the basis of the newly acquired property. The wash sale rules clearly do not apply to crypto, and the Congress, is, uh, in a report, came out and acknowledged as much, which creates substantial opportunities for banking losses in the crypto space and those losses aren't necessarily limited to crypto assets so if there are if you have security trading gains or other types of trading gains and you have substantial positions in cryptos you can trip the losses in the crypto assets and then use those losses against other types of gains that you may have which is a significant benefit especially given the volatility um, that crypto has experienced lately um, and then there's um, uh, the creation of funds uh, that trade in crypto and whether or not they can accept non-U.S. investors. One of the big issues um, around uh, crypto funds is whether or not the trading of crypto 
with a U.S. asset manager uh, creates a nexus for foreign limited partners. Um, in the report, the IRS came out and uh, said that they were unsure about whether or not that trading safe harbor would apply in that circumstance. On the other hand, uh, the, the reservations appear to be, I'm going to say, not really uh, too great because uh, in the same breath in which they said that there was uh, some uncertainty, they quoted enough of the factors that would support the conclusion that uh, creating a crypto fund and having non-U.S. investors admitted directly or using a feeder structure would protect would be protected by the statute. Uh, a third issue, which is really important for crypto investors, um, is the ability to use mark-to-market accounting for tax purposes. And it looks like, uh, with respect to the vast majority of assets that a crypto trader would be trading, that mark-to-market would be available. With respect to some less liquid um, uh, tokens, that uh, would not be uh, maybe not the right answer. So it may be a mixed bag on mark-to-market.